Good morning, America. My name is Michael Evans. You are listening to America's Voice Now. Our goal is to transform the way information is distributed. Our goal and our promise to you is to tell you the truth that the mainstream propaganda media hides from you every single day. To get in-depth, to review and analyze what's happening in the world, to point out where things are wrong, to clarify and commend where things are right, and to keep you educated, informed, motivated, and activated. The premise behind everything that we do is listener and user-oriented. And we are anxious for you to play an active role in your life and in the life of our republic. Our government, our nation, our republic has slidden away from us. And it's up to each of us to step in and take an active role to protect that which we have and are about to lose. The America that we grew up in is fast disappearing. And without our active involvement, we'll slip away from us entirely. Our children will be left with a world of elitists, statists, abusers, slave owners, and slaveholders, overlords and overseers. If that's the way you want your children to grow up and their children, continue to sit in your couch and eat another potato chip, watch another dumb sitcom, watch some more commercials, read a few more comics, have another discussion at work about Betty or Dave or Linda. Or take an active role, read, educate yourself. Find a topic of interest that blows your mind wide open. Study it, review it, read what you can. Dig deep. Look hard at yourself and the topic. Read opposing viewpoints so that you are not drinking your own Kool-Aid. Read both sides of the story. Form your own opinion. Never parrot anyone else's. That is the nature of what we do. That is the only way for us to retain and restore our republic. Our founders envisioned a nation led by a natural aristocracy. You don't even like to hear the word aristocracy. But the way they meant it was vastly different from the way you think of it. A natural aristocracy is not one of birth or wealth. A natural aristocracy is laden with people who grow in their intelligence, in their wisdom, in their conviction, in their activity. A natural aristocracy is a nation led by people with virtue, driven to deliver the best for the nation willing to sacrifice their own personal, perhaps financial, familial, and other benefits or ties in an effort to try to improve the lives and the nation which they lead. Did you know that the founders decried the idea of paid public service? That Benjamin Franklin, in particular, during his address to the Continental Congress, was explicitly against high-paid office because his assertion was clear. If you pay these people 
we will descend into a monarchy. Did you know that George Washington never accepted compensation for his presidential term? Did you know that he fought the entire Revolutionary War without compensation? He wasn't as rich as you think. In fact, after the Revolutionary War, and even during, his farm was in such disarray that he was on the edge of bankruptcy. And still he fought, still he led, without compensation. Contrast that to Ms. Pelosi, who says that if you were to pass a bill that says Congress doesn't get paid unless they do their job, it would be demeaning. Really? Well, apparently, Ms. Pelosi has trouble even spelling the word Constitution, much less adhering to it or honoring it. I find that and her offensive. Our nation was built on the backs of great men and women who believed that the best, the cream of the crop, would rise to the top, but not based upon monetary compensation, based on virtue, based on the courage of their convictions, based on their beliefs, based on their principles, based on personal sacrifice in favor of a job well done. I dare say I don't think there's a single member in Congress today who would work like that. Where do we turn, America? How do we turn? Remember that this nation is, the, is like the Titanic. It does not turn on a dime. It turns slowly. However, the icebergs are directly dead ahead. Collision is imminent. Collision is imminent. How do we prevent disaster? I don't have all the answers. I'm open to hearing well-reasoned, logical arguments. Do you have one? It can't be emotional. It can't be reckless. It can't be violent. It must be well elucidated. It must be clearly defined. It must be achievable. And it must have a, a specific and clear goal in mind. I think America should get together and literally 20, 30, 50 million of us temporarily move to Washington, D.C. Put a movement together of individuals who are deeply concerned about our nation and literally sit outside Washington until they all leave. Until they leave. Like the villagers in the movie Frankenstein, our sole chant should be, send out the monster. Eliminate them from office and bar them from running again. Institute a new plan for Congress that states anyone who can and will run will be running purely as a patriotic duty. Limit the power of the federal government as constitutionally directed, and we might have a chance. We're going to be joined by Doreen Hannes in a few minutes, right after this break. We'll be right back. You're listening to America's Voice now. Last time on The Dennis Miller Show. At an event thrown by the website Politico, Bill Gates said, quote, some days I wish we had a system like the U.K., quote, to give Obama more power. 
Yeah, some days I wish Windows worked like Apple. How's that, <laughs> Billy Boy? These guys are fetishistic. He's in the, you know, he wants it to work more like the UK. He wants to see Obama padding around in one of those powder Weekdays blades. from 9 till noon is the Dennis Miller Zone on the Ozarks Best News Talk 1071. The area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry, your Class 3 dealer for automatic weapons and suppressors, including Gem Tech and Huntertown, with a great selection of holsters, slings, magazines, and gun storage options. West Plains Pawn and Jewelry will also do special orders. With new arrivals every week, the area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry, 1713 West U.S. Highway 160, or shop online at westplainspawn.com. America, I ask you, are you doing your part? Are you doing your true level best? Or are you waiting for someone else to initiate change? You're either going to be a part of it, or you're part of the problem. It's up to you to make your decision. We're joined by Doreen Hannes. Doreen is the purveyor, author, and creator of truthfarmer.com. She is also uh, a very special friend of ours and a great guest that comes with us every Friday and joins with us to go over issues that are current in the news, talk about issues that affect our lives, affect our nation. And uh, I thank her and I appreciate her doing so. Good morning, Doreen. Thank you for joining us. Well, good morning, Michael. It's always fun to do a radio show with you. Thanks for sharing the airwaves with me. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. How much snow did you have? Oh, man. It's, it, it's beautiful. It's like a winter wonderland out there. <laughs> <laughs> I think about four inches, actually. Walking in a winter wonderland. <laughs> it, is a beautiful, it is a beautiful thing. Yeah, well, you know, and, it, and it's very good for the ground, actually. There's Absolutely. A lot of nitrogen released when we have snow cover. So. Boy, don't we need water, too. <laughs> so we can't get enough of that right now. Well, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's good. This is good. This will be very helpful for a whole lot of things. And um, actually, next week, no matter what, I'm putting in my garden. So if there's still snow on the ground, it ought to be interesting. <laughs> really? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Here's a snow shovel and a garden shovel. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Get at it. We'll see you in a few hours. Right. <laughs> hey, um, uh, Fairview School Board here in West Plains took a pretty bold move the other day. And they, um, they uh, put, a, put in place an initiative to train and um, employ a, an unnamed and unknown number of employees on their school campus with 40 hours of, of training. Mm-hmm. and arms that's hey that's what we need to do is that awesome or is I that think, awesome i think that they need to be sent congratulations notes and thank you for standing up for sanity and absolutely and every person within the sound of my voice should be <laughs> calling and contacting the fairview school board and let them know that you are that you are proud of their courageous stance and that you appreciate that well, it's much better than what I was told the Houston schools were instructed to do, which was if there's a shooter on the scene, the teachers are to run away in a zigzag pattern. <laughs> with, you know, like with kindergartners. I mean, give you know, me a break. My, my son is a my son is a <clears throat> designated marksman, <clears throat> to be politically correct. <laughs> designated marksman. <laughs> That's what they call them now. Okay. You don't want you don't dare use the word sniper. That's too un PC. Oh, I see. Okay. And um, they have a saying in their in their uh, in their group, which is "Don't run, you'll only die tired." <laughs> 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 you know, don't waste your time. <laughs> well, um, you know, I, I think that's wonderful, and I applaud them. And I think that all of these school districts ought to do the same thing. I, for one, now if I if I used public schools. I would feel much better about sending my child into an area where somebody could actually protect them. Sure. Well, here's the cool part. This is um, uh, each of the district employees uh, who completed the training, their identities remain confidential under Mm -hmm. the Federal Safe Schools Act, which is probably the only federal act I can (laughs) 
yeah. <laughs> or the only portion of a federal act they can abide by. Um, and they're now able to carry concealed firearms while on the job, protecting the stu- school students, certified and non-certified staff. First of all, they, they each had to go through a 40-hour training, which was done by a four-person training team, including Don Crowley, Fred Long, Jason Long, and Rob Pilkington. That's the same group that was going to run our concealed carry two-day tactical course. I'm sorry, not concealed carry, our two-day pistol tac one course. Um, and unfortunately, it's been canceled because of the weather. But okay. um, the, uh, the, they, they also underwent under uh, a comprehensive background in drug testing, as well as a psychiatric and psychological examination. Perfect. Each year, they annually will retrain the ability to carry concealed firearms at the school, and the employees must complete a 16-hour training course and qualify with their firearms on a biannual basis, with all testing and training uh, administered by uh, Shield Solutions, which is a, a friend of mine, a gentleman by the name of Greg Martin. He is the president and the CEO. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, um, by the way, folks, if you would like to, uh, to know more about Shield Solutions, and you can contact Greg Martin at 293-4552. So um, there, this is, in my opinion, um, you know, the, the kind of thing that is exactly our, the, the right and cor- – let me, let me rephrase that. I don't want to be accused of being right wing. This is the correct solution <laughs> to the problem of danger in our schools, yeah. not stripping in, innocent you know, uh, and law-abiding citizens. And, and l- let me rephrase that, just period citizens. I'm tired of hearing that word law-abiding inserted in there because – Basically, everybody's a felon before you tie your shoes in the morning. So the real issue is we got to stop using language like that. We just have to say stopping citizens, not law-abiding citizens. I'm a law-abiding citizen, and I'm barred and prohibited forever from owning a firearm, which I find inexcusable. Um, and, and, you know, the Second Amendment says shall not be infringed. It doesn't say shall not be infringed as long as you're not popular with the, with the government, right? Or if you think unregulated thoughts. <clears throat> or if you think unregulated thoughts, really, right. please. Yes. So anyway, the funding was provided for this uh, training by the uh, by the Fairview School District employees and, um, uh, and th- themselves, and was approved in a unanimous seven to zero vote by the district school board. So people, get out there, call that school board, let them know that you applaud, that you congratulate them on their on their decision, and that you appreciate them having the courage of their convictions. Absolutely, and another thing, their model can be used for all of these other school districts. You know, they're Absolutely. like, well, I don't know, how did they do it? Well, get that from the Fairview School Board and spread that around to your own area school board. Exactly. This is, this Take is, a good example and cookie right. cutter and replicate it, right? Exactly. And, I mean, it, it, sounds, it sounds wonderful, Michael. You know, exactly the things that you would be concerned about. You have to go undergo some type of psychiatric evaluation because... Frankly, there are some teachers who um, I might not really want having a firearm, you know. Um, well, and by the way, it's not just teachers. It's school employees. So, well. you, know, you know, and that's the beautiful part. You don't know if it's the janitor or the lunch lady or the teacher at the school or the administrator or the assistant principal or the guidance counselor. You just don't know. Right, and that's the way it ought to be. You know, the children have, have the ability to be protected, not just have adults around them that want to protect them. Exactly. But who are able to. And I, I think Ready, that's willing, wonderful. and able. Right. So let's, let's do that. You know, everybody get a copy of what it was Fairview School Board followed, their protocol, and disseminate that amongst all the school districts, not just in Missouri. Right. Everywhere. Well, I'm I'm going to talk to um, the school board here. I also uh, put a, sent a note out this morning on this uh, this Common Core uh, program. Are you familiar with Common Core? Just summarily. This fella Darren, who's a listener, and I, I thank you, Darren. By the way, I know you're listening now, or at least I hope you are. <laughs> um, he has sent me a, a link. There's two bills out there: House Bill six sixteen and okay. Senate Bill two ten. Now the these are. Um, bills which wait until you hear this you're going to be you know you and i when we find these things our hair stands on end and you know smoke starts coming out of our ears right (laughs) um this was uh, promoted the other day on on blaze tv in glenbeck and michelle malkin has an article out on her website and the federal government last week reported on a massive new student tracking database which is created as part of the nationalized common core database uh, or standard scheme 
And uh, this is, the, by the way, the GOP is all behind this, including uh, Jeb Bush, our, uh, our uh, last tyrant's son or brother. Um, parents are caught off guard by the stealthy tracking racket that's now mobilizing across the country. Uh, th- this is what, here's what they're doing. They are utilizing, they're buying and selling kids' privacy by taking money from these organizations like Google and others. And so basically what they're doing is they're, they're filling out, this was sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Oh, great. Um, George Soros is the backer for Common Core. A nonprofit startup called In Bloom evolved out of these strange bedfellow partnerships. By the way, it's uh, this is also part of the uh, Rupert Murdoch News Corp. So, mm-hmm. f- fake news. I mean, f- uh, faux news. I mean, Fox News is part right, of it. Right, right, right. Gotcha. Um, so anyway, the here's here's the deal. The uh, the DOE exposes the big lie that Common Core is about raising academic standards by revealing its progressive design to measure and track children's. Here's their quotes: competency in recognizing bias in sources. What does that tell us? So that's that's like that that, uh, that professor who said you can you have to do a thing on the news media, but you can't use Fox News as an example. Right? <laughs> uh, flexibility, cultural awareness and competence, appreciation for diversity, empathy, perspective taking, trust and service orientation. Social engineering. Bingo. Mm -hmm. School districts and state governments are pimping out highly personal data on children's feelings, beliefs, biases, and flexibility instead of doing their own jobs, imparting knowledge, and minding their own business. Mm -hmm. Jeb Bush is behind this. There is a a link out there for a – by the way, Missouri has their own program to block this, and we have our own – um, we have our own bill out there right now, so we all need to make sure that we're supporting these two bills. I'll give them to you again in a minute. But there's a website out there called truthinamericaneducation.com. And if you go there, Missouri has their own program. I'm going to find it for you, and I'm going to give you the uh, web address for that. This is called uh, Mo Against Common Core.webs.com. It's Missouri's Coalition Against Common Core working to regain local control of education in Missouri. Um, well done, well done website, lots of information on here. And best of all, there is a, um, a, 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 an opt-out form which you can sign and submit to your school, which is what I really like. <laughs> Basically telling them, uh, under no circumstances may you provide, you know, may you, may you utilize our children this way. So um, I strongly encourage everybody to get get behind breaking the back of this thing because uh, this is unacceptable. Uh, here's what the, the opt-out document says. I'm going to read this real quick before the break. As the parent or legal guardian of blank, you insert your kid's name, I realize I have the fundamental and legal right to direct the upbringing and education of my child, and I respectfully and formally request my child, one, be placed in a classroom that will not be using Common Core state standards, Two, be placed in a classroom that provides explicit example-based instruction, guided practice, and independent practice to reinforce learning. Three, not be administered any formative or summative assessment related to the Common Core state standards or used to assess student learning of the Common Core state standards. And not be administered any computerized assessment, and you are hereby prohibited from using any computer or handheld mobile device for any assessment purpose. Um, so anyway, the upshot is, folks, get over there, sign this document, submit it to your school board. I've already hit the West Plains School Board, the, uh, Dr. Thompson, with this, and I'm asking her to have a hearing at the school board that's going to be public. I'll be getting more information out as soon as I have a date about it. I'm going to raise holy hell until our West Plains, Missouri School District, which is the only one I can affect because that's the one I'm in, mm-hmm. takes action to block this hook, line, and sinker. So... Good okay, <laughs> you. Um, I want to talk about that hemp bill that's out there right now. When we All come right. back from the break, can we wrap on that? You sure can. Uh, well, you can. All <laughs> okay, right, awesome. I will. <laughs> Hang on, folks. We'll be right back with Doreen Hannes. Doreen's website, by the way, is truthfarmer.com. Truthfarmer.com. And also, she uh, is the purveyor of the uh, Property Rights Coalition website at prcnews.org. I'm Chris Foster. 
an apparent double murder suicide at Quantico Marine Base in Virginia. It's been a long night as we have uh, begun to deal with the tremendous loss that uh, happened last night. The base commander, Colonel David Maxwell, says all three were permanent staff, active duty Marines, one killing another, then a second and himself in barracks on the base. The victims were a man and a woman. Police in Brunswick, Georgia, looking door to door for suspects in the murder of a 13-month-old boy shot in a stroller. His mother, Sherry West, says two young boys tried to rob her, but she didn't have any money. He says, well, I'm going to kill your baby. And, and I said, please don't kill my baby. She says one of the boys shot her in the leg and her baby in the head. President Obama now stopping in Amman, Jordan, after three days in Israel and the West Bank. He'll meet today with Jordan's King Abdullah. Fox News, we report, you decide. Get a hold of Brian down at Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance. You can call him at 870-492-4030, or you can find him on the web at ozarkmtnselfreliance.com. Located a half mile east of Walmart and Route 62 in Mountain Home. My friends over at Chantilly's Artisan Bakery at 255-2253, number 2 Evans Arcade off the square in West Plains. Best damn bakery in 100 miles. You can reach Mary at 255-2253. My friend Bill Stone over at Stone Construction at 293-0116. Whether remodeling or doing new or custom construction or light commercial, Bill's the guy for you. 293-0116. West Plains Pawn and Gun, located on Route 160, just about a mile east of Walmart on the right-hand side. Westplainspawn.com. You can also reach them by a telephone at 417-256-3000. Friends over at the Battery Station at 303 Washington Avenue, right off the square in West Plains. You can find them on the web at BatteryStation.com, and you can call them at 417-257-7799. Also, don't forget to stop by Pizza Hut for an outstanding lunch special between 11 and 2. Salad and pasta all together. You can also visit them on Tuesday evenings for family night. Kids eat free under 12. And... Jason over at Wits End Classic Barbershop, sponsor of our telephone line. Make sure that you see Wits End Classic Barbershop for your next shave and a haircut. Outstanding, fine young man and a great patriot as well. He's on the square in West Plains. I know what you're thinking, Bunk. You're thinking, did he fire six shots or only five? Dirty Harry gets all his ammo from the battery station. John Rambo, you guessed it. He gets his ammo from the battery station, too. So if you need ammo, go to the place where the guys who know about ammunition go, the battery station. They have one of the largest supplies of ammunition in the area. So make sure you're stocked up and don't get low on shells. Go to the battery station at 303 Washington Avenue in West Plains. Weather sponsorships are now available on News Talk 107.1 The Point. Get more information, email info at diamondmediaradio.com for complete details. From the Point Weather Center, for this morning, mostly cloudy skies with snow, sleet, and freezing rain. That'll change the rain mixed with snow for the afternoon. The high near 40, cloudy tonight, low 34. Mostly cloudy tomorrow, high 46, cloudy with snow Sunday, the high 38. I'm staff meteorologist Jim Rinaldi, and for more information, visit my1071thepoint.com. There's one man on this earth who really, truly gets it. The Democrat Party is not the Democrat Party of 40, 50, 60 years ago. The Democrat Party is a radical left party, populated at the top by 1960s retreads and other sorts of radicals, miscreants, and malcontents, many of whom aren't from the 1960s, but they might as well be, including the president himself. Weeknights from 5 till 8, Mark Levin on the Ozarks Best News Talk, 1071. There is this product on Amazon that is simply going crazy. The Banana Slicer, almost 2,500 consumer reviews. I've been trying to come up with an ideal way to slice a banana. Use a knife, they say. Well, my parole officer won't let me around knives. Or how about this one? What can I say about the Banana Slicer that hasn't already been said about the wheel or penicillin? Obviously just a pure host. Saturdays noon to 3 and weekdays at 7.35 for your digital minute. It's Kim Commando on the Ozarks Best News Talk 1071. All right, we return with our dear friend Doreen. Doreen is uh, so knowledgeable about so many things, guys, especially about agriculture and self-reliance and those types of topics. I'll tell you what. Um, her knowledge on on this this kind of thing is so extensive. I'm I'm 
I'm actually embarrassed that I'm not. I can't even hold a candle to her. <laughs> she, she's like a searchlight out there, and I'm like a bic lighter. <laughs> That's all right. You've got me on the firearms freedom issues and legal maneuverings therein. So. Well, you know, I mean, we all have our. And you know what? That just goes to 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 show my point. We all have our area that we've taken interest and in, have expertise in. Absolutely. And so it's imperative that we all you know, become educated and become a subject matter expert, right? And then we can accurately and reasonably share that information with others. And, right. you know, I, I even I even read and, and watch my competitors, if you want to call them that, you know, just because I want to make sure that sometimes I check myself so I'm not drinking my own Kool-Aid, you know? Because, right. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, we can we can do that too. I mean, you know, we have to be careful that we're not, that we're not completely off the map. I'll give you an example. Um, there's uh, two, cent- two uh, Congress people from the state of New Jersey who are asking uh, the Department of Homeland Security to answer questions on all those bullets they've been buying. Right. DHS told them it's none of your business. Now, <laughs> first of all, for two senators from New- or two Congress people from New Jersey, I think one's a senator and one's a congressman, for them to be the ones to ask DHS. In that, in, in probably the most repressive <laughs> regulatory state in the union. <laughs> right. I mean, knowing I'm, I come from there. Okay, so I know, <laughs> I know from whence I talk. <laughs> right. And for for New Jersey to be the first one to go out there and say, "Hey, uh, what's up with all the bullets, babe?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to wonder, you know. So you, you keep hearing, "Oh, that's just tinfoil hat talk." Well, it isn't because you've got state senators who are out there throwing it out and saying, "Wait a second, what's going on?" And, you know, he says, here's what he said. His name is uh, um, uh, Timothy Hulescamp. And he mm-hmm. revealed this week that the Department of Homeland Security has refused to answer questions from multiple members of Congress regarding recent purchases of huge amounts of ammo and weapons. They have no answer for that, he says. They refuse to answer that question. I've got a lot of various questions about agencies, about multiple things. Um, they refuse to let us know what is going on. So I don't really have an answer for you. Multiple members of Congress are asking these questions. So here's my point. For those who are walking around saying, ah, those guys talking about that DHS bullet stuff, they're full of tinfoil hats. No, we're not. The simple truth is we're not full of, we're not wearing tinfoil hats and we're not full of bunk and we're not full of conspiracy theories. It is happening and even Congress can't get answers to it. So the FBO site, they're requesting people to put in bids for these amounts of ammunition. I get it. I mean, it's it's documented. You know, when people don't want to be confused with the facts, then that's their own problem. Sure. You well, know? and that's the problem is, you know, people who – and that's why I say you got to be careful that you read opposing viewpoints so that you're not drinking your own Kool-Aid because right. that's the problem with ideology. If you don't read opposing viewpoints in order to check yourself from time to time, then right. you become nothing more than an ideologue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty right? much. You know, you're preaching to the choir continually, and you're only listening to the choir that you're preaching to. Exactly. Yeah, and so, so you're, you're caught in a loop. And how do you know that you're actually right, or if you're just, you know, smoking your own dope? I mean, well, you know, you gotta you got to check yourself, right? And the only right. way to do that is to listen to opposing viewpoints and read and hear what they have to say. And at least that point, you've got some kind of way to make a deci- to you know formulate an opinion, right? Exactly. So exactly. Um, we've got a couple of callers on, and then I want to talk about this hemp bill. Go ahead, okay. caller. Welcome to the show. Uh, good morning, Mike. Good uh, morning. Anyway, uh, on that gun control act that they're trying to get through Congress, yeah, they say they're not going to uh, uh, go after the assault weapons because they didn't think it had passed, but they got a whole bunch of other things they're trying to get through. Now, isn't that what they was after to start with, was the assault weapon? Well, uh, yeah, but what they're actually going to do now is they're going to do something even more malicious, and that's that uh, Reed is going to shovel in this nonsense about making sure that we can't sell or buy a gun without a background check. Right. So any, every one of you who is listening to this had better be on the phone. You, you, know, don't, you can waste your time with Claire McCaskill. I don't think you're going to get anywhere. But we can make Blunt very painfully aware of the fact that if he votes for that bill, he is done. Mm-hmm. He well, is I, done. I've already called uh, Vicki Hartzler and Blunt's office, and I think there's something even more diabolical in the whole scheme. They're going to make everybody crazy. They're, and I, I told him, I said, who decides who's crazy? The, the FBI, the CIA, the local police, the president? Who's going to determine who's fit to have the gun or not? That's what they're after. Well, if you listen to Lindsey Graham, who is a leading conservative, 
He'll tell you that the president has the right because we're at war to make decisions about life or death decisions one on one, mano a mano. He can decide. Hey, you know what? Doreen or Mike is a problem. They are they're they're creating a problem, and I have the right to kill him with a drone strike. And that's according to Lindsey Graham. Who right. happens to be one of the leading conservatives? By the way, if that doesn't tell you that Lindsey Graham has got to take a hike, I don't know what will. Well, it so, seems, seems like they can't make people felons fast enough. Well, that's the truth. Guns, so now they're going to make everybody crazy. Sure, well, that's exactly that's the point. Is, you know? They've been working on that for years, actually. You know, people who are quote unquote overly religious are crazy. People who are smokers are crazy. Sure, people who you know. Quote Hold the Constitution. Opinions according to whom <laughs> right. are crazy, you know. Um, Agreed. Exactly, so, and that's how they're going to get the guns away from you. One by one, they're going to say, you're crazy, you're crazy, you're crazy, and take them guns. Well, they keep doing that. They're going to find out those who actually are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're going to bump into a real one. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I've, I've run into a lot of people that I thought were absolutely crazy, but they still were not dangerous. Okay? Sure. I get it, and that's true. Well, I well, listen. We uh, yeah. go ahead, Doreen. I'm sorry, caller. I'm going to jump because we got the loan. The phones are jammed. Uh, but okay. go ahead, Doreen. All right. Well, I mean, the the issue is, you know, who's going to decide that? You've got a board, so you've got some, you know, great big elevated individuals who look at some worksheet and determine that somebody's crazy according right. to their agreed standards. You know, it's it's totally subjective. And it's not something that you can, that is actually measurable. It's, sure. You know, in effect, it's a, it's a false science to right. some extent um, because it, it, it is not measurable or repeatable. Right. You know, so it's observation, and that's about it. And it's observation with a biased eye. Right. Go, ahead, go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, I'm sorry this is off topic this morning, Mike, but... Oh, that's uh, it. The, the real ID stuff that's got the installation yes. of the equipment... Yeah. Is going into West Plains, Alton, and Sayre, among others, in this area. When? What day? This afternoon. Oh, really? And I, when I talked to someone yesterday, someone suggested that you can get a one-year license, and you'll get your regular license. It would give us a year to figure this thing out. Well, did you did you file a, a court uh, motion yesterday? I was told I needed to hire an attorney, and they had to submit the forms to the people that were doing it, and you had to get a That's response. That's not true. That's a lie. That well, is a lie. No, I didn't file one because I, could, I talked to a judge in, in Alton, and he, he wasn't able to help me. I didn't know what else to do. I talked gotcha. to the guy that's okay. running for the Constitutional Party, and I'm trying to think who else. And it, But it's in the process. Three o'clock this afternoon, they start installing them. Okay. There, there's a list on prcnews.org. It's down a little bit, but there is a list of all of the DMVs and their projected dates. For putting in yeah, the new I, equipment, I saw I saw West Plains was on for the by the end of the month, but I didn't get I didn't okay. see a specific date. But apparently that's it today, right? Yes, I had weekend. I was going to go, go down. down there and you refuse, and you have them write you a receipt that you have refused, yes. right? And should you be pulled <clears throat> over, you know, just say this is an issue; they're in violation of the law, and you know, I mean, it is kind of big news. So everybody's aware of it. Sure. Well, the other reason is that Kinder is looking for people to actually be plaintiffs in the lawsuits county by county. Exactly. So if you're if if you go down and you live in a county and you are and you are a refuse to allow them to scan your birth certificate and your other documents if you have a CCW permit. And I'd like to see some people who don't have a CCW permit too because I don't want this to be limited just to the concealed carry people. Right. It's for right? everything. It's got to be for everyone. And so if you've got a uh uh you know, if you're if you're going to go down there Make sure that you don't give them any documents. When they refuse to give you a license without those documents, you get them to give you a receipt, and then you email me at mike at americasvoicenow.org, and I'll get you all the right information for you to go back and become a plaintiff in the lawsuit against this. If you are a DOR employee or an employee of any of the fee offices and you want to be a whistleblower, Peter Kinder, lieutenant governor, has given his personal assurance that you will not be retaliated against, yeah. and he will protect you from retaliation. If you are one of them, please contact me at Mike at americasvoicenow.org, and we will make sure that we get you to the right people. Well, I asked, I asked yesterday if there was any way they could just refuse to have the, the equipment installed, and they weren't aware of how, and I didn't know quite how to tell I, I'll them tell about you how Peter you call, it's called It's called a lock on the door. 
lock on the door. Just say no. Okay, we're going to take a break. Right. Thank you very much for the call. Appreciate that update, by the way. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, folks. Uh, when we return, we will uh, talk about this hemp bill, which we keep slipping away from us. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back, folks. You're, uh, we're, you're listening to America's Voice Now. The area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. Online at westplainspawn.com. Top of the line, new and used optics from Nikon, Leopold, Burris, Redfield, Zeiss, and Schmidt and Bender. Ask about their selection of binoculars, laser sights, and night vision goggles. With new arrivals every week, the area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. 1713 West U.S. Highway 160 or shop online at westplainspawn.com. I had this illness that really made me powerless over alcohol and that insisted that I got drunk. And so I got drunk. It doesn't have anything to do with trying to control it. An alcoholic who picks up the first drink will pick up the second drink. I can't say to anyone, no, 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 don't drink. But I can say that when you decide you don't want to drink, come to AA. The door to AA is always open. Alcoholics Anonymous. It works. Look us up. Check your phone book, newspaper, or AA.org. They say that people actually suffer from anxiety if they don't know where their cell phone is. And you know what they call it now, are you ready? Nomophobia. There are other phobias like boobtubophobia. That's when you're afraid of missing Judge Judy. Okay, the worst of all is commandophobia. Saturdays, noon to 3 for the Kim Commando Show and weekdays at 720 for your digital minute. That's Kim Commando on the Ozarks Best News Talk. Having difficulty with your computer? Do you think it has a mind of its own? Well, don't be alarmed. This happens to everyone at some point in time. Worry no more. No more. Computer Dave and Kyle can help you out with PC Geeks, a weekly show right here on 107.1 The Point. Tune in Thursdays at 1 o'clock to ask computer-related questions and listen to the web topic of the week. That's PC Geeks here on 107.1 The Point. All right, we're back, and we are again joined uh, by Doreen Hannes. Jo- Doreen joins us every Friday um, because, uh, well, heck, she's really good. <laughs> and you guys love her, so um, I'm happy to have her on, and I'm happy that she can take the time to, to join us on Fridays. Uh, Doreen has a website called truthfarmer.com, and I really, really, really encourage you to get there and, and read about all of the things that she's got going on there, especially related to self-reliance issues and, and uh, agricultural and politics related to you know, our, our, our natural lives, if you will. And um, then she also is uh, a participant, and I, I, I guess you keep the website, right, for the Property Rights Coalition. Yeah, uh, I try to. Which, <laughs> <laughs> which is prcnews.org. That's P-R-C, like Property Rights Coalition, uh, news.org. And you can uh, find all kinds of great information up there every single day. So we're all doing our part here to break the back of the propaganda fed to us every single day. Uh, my question is to each of you, what are you doing individually as a an attempt to try to hold back the juggernaut, if you will, right? So um, let's talk about this bill before somebody else calls. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah um, we've, we actually have a number of really excellent bills in our state legislature this year and um, there are some bad ones out there too but uh, it seems really that we're focusing on um, positive bills that will increase the sovereignty of the state and also our economic viability as well as our freedom you know with the second amendment uh, preservation act etc um, this bill is actually it's put up by a democrat and it's senate bill 358 and it's to legalize industrial hemp production in the state of Missouri. Now, the United States is the only, the only country in the world that flatly prohibits hemp production. Right. And, and hemp, is, you know, uh, we can get into all the details about why and how, but we don't really need to. Um, this well, bill the- would, uh, would allow hemp production by anybody who wasn't a convicted drug offender, 
if it had Brother. less than one percent of THC content. Now, to put to put that into perspective, you know, people. Uh, unfortunately, there are still people who hear the word hemp and think, think you know, it is pot. Yeah, think it's pot, and it's. N- I mean, you would have to smoke a bushel of this stuff right. to get anything. You would die so, of smoke inhalation right. before you actually. <laughs> yeah, you die of smoke before you actually got high. You got anything? <laughs> because one per- now at the federal level, the standard is point z- point zero. No, I'm sorry, point three percent. Mm-hmm makes it a, a controlled substance. But the marijuana that, you know, on the street, even back in, like, the 70s when it was not Weak. nearly as, as strong as it is now, evidently, um, is 65 to 11%. And wow. some of the medical marijuana is 16 to 18% THC. So that kind of puts it into perspective a little bit. So, you know, I mean, this is the equivalent of saying that you know, just to put it into the, another perspective that people can grasp, okay. this is the equivalent of saying, you you know, if if you can't have a thimble full of wine, right? Because yeah. that thimble full has enough alcohol content in it to do you harm. I and I, I gotta I gotta think, you know, that's just nonsense, right? Pretty so, much. I Pretty mean, much. But but this bill would actually be very very good for Missouri in an economic sense. I mean, hemp is a wonderful product. You can make clothing out of it. You know, all sorts of clothing, sandals, um, shirts, and and they're really, really good quality. And also, hemp oil is a really excellent um, healing aid. It's it's got indications that it helps with prevention and cure of cancer, um, and it's it's just very good for your system. Now, in Russia, they're actually taking hemp seeds and they eat hemp seeds. And it's like a porridge, like an oatmeal, and it's high in, high in a whole bunch of positive things, you know, fiber and protein, et cetera, right. and, and it heals you. Now, this would be a good bill for Missouri because there are a lot of people who are buying hemp products, and it's a, it's a nice feeling thing, you know, as far as clothing and bags and shoes and things like that, Michael. And it would give us a potential to provide U.S. grown hemp to the people who are turning it into products. Right. You know, and it, it's, well, it's not, been it, used, it's not it's, like genetically modified, Mike. You know? No, I know. You know what the real reason is that they banned it? Because yeah. <laughs> they can't tell the difference without actually testing it between that and regular pot. Well, And they want to be able to walk into a field and say, if it looks like this, it's weed. We can either arrest them or eradicate the product. And th- since they can't do that with hemp versus marijuana, they just eliminated, when they banned marijuana, they banned hemp too, because it was too hard for them to identify the difference between hemp and pot. Well, it was because William Randolph Hearst wanted to have the corner on the market on high-quality paper. That's why the whole thing got came up. It was, it was for a corner on a market for a particular entity that wanted to profiteer. That, you know. that is the definition of the monopoly, which is guaranteed by whom, folks? Who, who is the only one that can make a monopoly? Government. Well, you Without know, government's assistance, monopolies cannot exist. Anyway, this, this bill, and I, I just put it up on my Facebook page, and I'll share it with you so you can share oh, it with your do. listeners. Yeah. It's um, Senate Bill Number 358 by Jason Holzman, I'm sorry, who's a Democrat out of Kansas City. And it's a really long bill. It's very, very detailed because the entire affect of the bill is to not allow pot production to be part of it. So right. it is complex, which I generally don't like in mm-hmm. legislation. But in this case, it, maybe it needs to be. Yeah. And it, it's going to come up before the General Rules Committee. And uh, Brian Nieves, who is a very, very good guy. And he I is, a, he yeah. is a hard-charging warrior boy. Yeah. I love that dude. <laughs> He's, he's I want to get him on the show. I right. think he would be. He, I mean, this is a guy who's done exactly what I've been suggesting for so long, which is jump inside the belly of the beast and start slashing at it from inside. Right. <laughs> yeah. So this, you know, I think that this would be a positive thing, and I, I do think that it would be very good for Missouri economically. Absolutely. To, to have, you know, the ability to produce 
United States grown and produced hemp within the state of Missouri. We're, you know, we're getting killed in agriculture in every way, shape, and form. And this would be positive, and it would not give a handle to a corporation because no corporation really has control over these seeds, Michael. Amazing. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for this. I think it would be very good. And I, you know, people need to not be afraid of less than one percent THC. Right. You know, I mean, not to mention the fact that I mean, it's ridiculous anyway. I mean, you know, if you wanted to get rid of, if you wanted to get rid of 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 pot, you know, um, it, honestly, I, you know, I, I don't smoke it. I don't even like it. And uh-huh. and and you know, I, I, to me, it's it makes people so apathetic that they're useless to themselves and those around them. You would think they'd want us all to smoke it. But, right, <laughs> agreed, you know. I think they secretly do, and that's why they allow the Mexican cartels to control the drug trade. But the truth is, you know, if, if you were to legalize pot, you would effectively immediately end the drug cartels, period. And they don't want to do that because, frankly, they're making way too much money and, you know, absconding with way too much power by using them as the, the you know, the puppet that they can point to that's the, the nightmare in our dreams, right? right? Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Hi, Mike, um, and, and speaker. Uh, I was just listening to the hemp thing, and I know we don't have a lot of time. Um, I was always one of those that had thought that hemp, uh, I went, hemp, oh, that's just another way to try and get pot right. utilized. And, and this mm-hmm. just, you know, everybody's going to be smoking pot and using pot. That, that's just a, a sneaky way of saying pot. Right. And then I looked at something, a friend sent me something about the healing power and all the different right. things about hemp. Right. And I started reading up on it. And just for our listeners, I have to say they are not the same thing. Pot and hemp are not. No. And no. for those of us that thought they were, need to learn about it. Sure. You'd have to smoke pounds of it to get high. Oh, I mean, it's kind of li- like saying grapes and brandy are the same thing. Right. And, and the exactly. healing powers of hemp, the, the healthy healing powers for, for like an herbal healing thing, well, is Tremendous. Sure, not to mention rope and clothing and, right. and, and all kinds of construction materials. For those of you who don't know it, Henry Ford built an entire car body out of hemp. Thank you for that call, caller. Henry Ford built an entire automobile body out of hemp and layered it like fiberglass. And, wow. you know, I mean, it was as strong as the current steel that we use today. So there you right. go. <laughs> right. So, you know, this is, this is something that I think that we should... We should advocate for, you know, sure. on, the, on the one side, it promotes Missouri sovereignty because the federal level is 0.3% of THC makes it a controlled substance. So this brings it up to 1%, which nobody can get high on anyway. You're going to die of smoke inhalation before you could get high on it. And it, it would help our economic viability, which we definitely need some help with here. And if there's one thing the Midwest needs, it's a brand new product that somebody yes. else doesn't already have a stranglehold on, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Goodness so, gracious. So I like this, and, and I think, you know, I'd like to hear from people who, are, who don't like it, from people who are very concerned about it sure. as well. Well, there, you know? in that case, you can send your opposing viewpoint, if you'd like, to Doreen. You can go to her website. Uh, which is truthfarmer.com, and you can send her your argument against hemp if you think that there is one, and you copy me on it too. You can send it to Mike at America's Voice Now dot org. Sure. So um, we're we're going to wrap. This is the end of our show. Doreen, thank you okay. so much for joining with us. I appreciate you, thank uh, you. folks. Get over to Doreen's website at truthfarmer.com, and then also her other website at prcnews.org. That's P R C like Papa Romeo Charlie. Uh, news.org and that way you can find out exactly what's going on with the property rights coalition groups as well as Doreen and all of her efforts thank you folks you can find us on the web and on YouTube and on Facebook simply type in facebook.com forward slash America's voice now or youtube.com forward slash America's voice now we have this and every other show that we do posted live up there you can also hit our website directly at America's voice now.org thanks for joining us today we'll be back tomorrow morning irrespective of this weather And, Doreen, I appreciate you joining. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. So, okay, folks, that's it for our show today. Uh, Please make sure that you join us tomorrow morning. We'll be there at 6. Ladies and gentlemen, this is KBMV Birch Tree is the Ozark's best news talk, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Fox News Radio, I'm Dave Anthony. Why? That's the question at Quantico, where three Marines are dead, including the gun.